2015 is shaping up to be the year of the protests in Canada. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say it's already begun. Thousands of Canadians hit to the street this Saturday to protest Bill C-51. This bill would give broad powers to Canada's spy agency to track, surveil, and even detain so-called terror suspects. Advocates say the bill has little to no oversight and could threaten Canadians' right to protest. The well-behaved protesters consisted of people of all conceivable ages, and the cops, who were few in numbers, were quite respectful to the protest itself. And I can't seem to find any arrests that were made on that day. So major cities across Canada had these large demonstrations, and not one arrest was made, leading many to think, would the government even abuse its powers? Well, not even 24 hours later, another protest was about to be held in Montreal. Now this is known as the Anti-Police Brutality March, and it took place at a scene where cops had killed an unarmed homeless person last year. But let me tell you something, this protest mm, didn't go over so smoothly. There were more police than actual protesters seen at the rally point, and within 30 minutes, the protest was declared illegal, the police kettled the protesters, and issued close to 100 $500 tickets. So 100 $500 or more tickets. So that means that the Montreal police had made a cool 50k in under an hour. I hope it paid for all that equipment. These two demonstrations offer us so much to learn from if we're hoping to move forward in this year of the protest. This C-51 march was a tremendous success. What did they do right? Stop hyping! They had a wide range of ages. It was well organized and the sentiment was that of non-violence. The police brutality march. What did they do wrong? Number one, they targeted police. Your name of your event was the anti-police. I don't care what the rest is because all the police heard was that you were anti-them. And what happened? They showed up and flexed their muscles. And it definitely didn't help that they had a fuck you mentality against the police. They did not give the police a route, and therefore, they gave the cops a reason to make it illegal. Don't give them a reason. And also, this protest has a stigma of having a history of violence that plagues it every year. Take your mask off! Hey. No, no, no! Put the rock down, man! Put the rock down! Hey! Put the rock down! The Take your mask off! You're a fucking cop, the three of you! Go on, it's our line! It's a peaceful demonstration! They can't decide it did foot time out! Beat them, they're trying to. They're gonna try to. Due to past protests, the image of the protests of the past is tarnishing that of the future. Protesting against police brutality is a noble cause, but you gotta keep in mind that if your protest gives the police a 50k budget increase, then you might want to learn a few things from the C-51 Saturday protest. If activists hope to have any outcome this year, they're gonna have to make sure that their talking points are so on point and so focused that they don't deviate from the point. Because the Prime Minister is not. He is going to continue to beat his drum of fear and war. And if you hope to have any outcome, then you have to make sure that you are as targeted as that person. But let me be clear, this is a robust mission. We're there to make those guys effective so they can take on the Islamic State and deal with them. And if those guys fired us, we're going to fire back and we're going to kill them just like our guys did, and we're very proud of the job they're doing. It's up to protesters to keep up with a unified voice, keeping on point and bringing awareness to the absurdity that is the current Canadian politics. For example, Harper is currently seeking to extend Canada's Iraq mission. This six-month mission has costed Canadians over $122 million since October, and they think it's a smart idea to extend that. Because it's so effective. 
All this while more than 70 scientists, engineers, and economic experts released a 56-page policy document stating that Canada is in the most favorable position to switch to renewable energies. They claim that Canada could cut 80% of its greenhouse gases and run entirely on renewable energy by the year 2035. The most significant barrier to stopping this from happening is not technological, and it's not economic. It's politics. So there you have it, folks. Our future is entirely in your hands. All we have to do is make sure that we stand up and remain calm, cool, and collected, and have one unified voice saying, Whoa! Huh! Good God!